So look, what really is the difference between this Tower Garden Grow and this Tower Garden Grow? They're the same tower gardens. The only difference in each one of these grows is the gardener. See, these people know how to grow in hydroponics and these guys, well, maybe they don't so much. We all love tower gardens. It's really easy to see why. And when you can go on YouTube and find amazing grows like this, it's hard not to get psyched up and want to go buy a tower garden and replicate their success. But that's usually not the story. Be my in-laws, the not so proud tower garden owners. Let me explain. My mother-in-law, she's been in a wheelchair for nearly 30 years. She has multiple sclerosis and her dream was to buy the tower garden, set it up and be able to wheel over to it and pick a salad maybe like once a week, right? So they got the tower garden flex. They have all the accessories, the lights, the trellis, the wheels. With this massive investment, you'd think they'd be able to at least grow a salad. Fast forward a few very mediocre grows and I even showed up and tried to help them. I documented their tower garden. They had basically vines of lettuce. Um, they had arugula bolting. Nearly every issue in the book they were experiencing from lighting to nutrients to pH, algae, and root rot. And it really was my impetus for making this video. I wanna help as many people as I can to bridge the gap between buying and setting up your tower garden and having a really successful grow in your tower garden. The gap is filled with a hydroponic education. So that's what this video is gonna be. I wanna teach you guys everything that you're gonna to need to know to have a successful grow in your tower garden. Tower garden companies, in particular Juice Plus, they're faced with a monumental task. You see, they're really good at moving products and getting them into people's hands, but then they have to come up with sort of a one-size-fits-all approach to education, to nutrients, to lighting, to pH, and they give you the education and the information that you would need for your plants to survive. But that's not good enough for us, right? That's why you're here. We wanna see grows like this. For example, when you look at um, Tower Garden's guide to how to grow. It only includes about a page and a half of hydroponic information. Uh, one of the more one size fits all things I noticed here was they recommend you set your pH anywhere between 5.0 and 7. Okay, well, that'll keep most plants alive, but let's say your plant wants a pH of like 5.8 and we're setting it anywhere between 5.0 and 7. If we deviate too far from 5.8 in any direction, what we're doing is limiting our plant's nutrient uptake. So the pH, or the potential for hydrogen, is directly related to how well your plants can take nutrients in from the water and use them. So if we're just setting our pH all over the board, if we're basically keeping it in a place where, hey, our plant's not gonna die, it's not gonna thrive either. So checking our pH constantly is one thing that every hydroponic gardener becomes very comfortable and familiar with. And you're not gonna to wanna to do that with analog test strips. Every pH gardener uses a digital pH meter. This is because we check our pH so often. I just wanna make things easy and simple. I want you guys to realize how simple hydroponic gardening really is. If you have the right teacher, the right instructions laid out in a way where you can start to put everything together on your own, then you'll realize this is so much easier than you might have ever thought it was. So let's cut out all the analog old school stuff. We're going digital. Just take readings with your meter. That'll be way easier. Now another meter and another area of your hydroponic or tower garden experience where you're going to need to be metering things is your EC or your nutrients. I was on a consultation call just yesterday with this uh, gentleman from Detroit, really awesome guy. And he bought one of those uh, $200 kind of prefab uh, Amazon tower gardens. And I asked him, he was having issues and I asked him what his EC was. And there was a long pause. I realized he didn't know what I was talking about. He didn't know that you were actually supposed to measure and maintain your nutrients in your garden. Um, a lot of people think that you can just use what's on the back of the bottle and constantly keep adding more and, and assuming that it's right. But the fact of it is, is all plants require different nutrients at for different times. So we don't know what our plants are really using and what they're leaving behind. In fact, there's really no way to tell what nutrients are actually in our water. But we can tell how many nutrients are in our water. And we do that with one of these. This is an EC or TDS meter. That stands for electrical conductivity or the total dissolved solids. Basically, all you really need to know now is that measures the nutrients in your water. This is a crucial tool alongside your pH meter when you do top offs, when you make any adjustment to your tower garden, these tools are gonna to be right alongside to assist you in making quick, 
accurate adjustments. If you want to know everything there is to know about nutrients, exactly what nutrients you should be putting in when, what EC you need to have everything set to, I actually have a uh, 14 video complete mastering your tower garden series. It's, uh, it's called Growing More Than Just Greens, and you might really benefit from that if you want to take this to the next step. So let's get into outdoor lighting. One thing that I've realized from many conversations with you guys is that uh, actually about 65% of the issues that people have in tower gardens are related directly to lighting. So I wanted to go ahead and just kind of lay it out and get this out there. I'm going to give you guys Synthesizing Sunlight, my ebook for free for watching this video. There's a discount code that I'm gonna drop at the very end of this video and you can go to my website, Humble Growth Hydroponics and download Synthesizing Sunlight, my complete lighting ebook for free. I just want you guys to be able to grow. Lighting is a big area with a lot of information and I just wanna give you guys the tools and the resources you're gonna need because lighting can really mess things up. Outdoor lighting, the sun, is by far the most popular way to light things, but this also can come with a lot of issues. So let's talk about some of the problems that outdoor tower garden lighting and an environment outside can create and some solutions that'll help you to uh, steer yourself in the right direction. First, I wanna talk about the heat that sunlight creates. If you, plant, if you put your tower garden outside and you live somewhere warm where it's gonna get above 85 degrees or if the, sun, if the tower garden's in direct sunlight where it's heating up and the water inside is gonna get above 85 degrees, then you're gonna run into some serious issues. What happens when it reaches that temperature is it invites root rot. And root rot's really just a blanket term for any like bacteria or fungus that can come in and attack your roots. The biggest killer of hydroponic plants is, in fact, root rot. I found it kind of funny when I was looking through uh, Juice Plus's Tower Garden uh, Maintenance Guide when they only lay out this statement saying, keep your water below 85 degrees. They don't explain why. They don't tell you that your plants will die if you don't do that. They just say, just keep your, keep your water below 85 degrees. But that's actually extraordinarily important. If you allow your water to get too warm, all of your plants are going to die. They will die slowly at first, and then it'll be a very, very fast progression. And there are ways we can avoid root rot. Obviously, keeping the water temperature down, keeping them out of that really hot direct sunlight if you live somewhere really hot, but also we can add things like hydrogen peroxide to our Tower Gardens Nutrient Reservoir, and that's gonna help to keep our roots clean, to keep uh, fungus and bacteria from even grabbing on to our roots in the first place. Now, if you do notice a plant developing root rot, if one of your plants have developed and the rest of your plants haven't, pull that plant as soon as you can. Some plants are much more susceptible to root rot than others. Some can live in above 85 degrees, and some have a really hard time as soon as it approaches 80. So keep an eye on your roots, and if you need to pull a plant, don't be afraid to just pull a plant out of that entire garden. Another big plant ending issue uh, that direct sunlight can cause is algae. Now, algae is caused when any wet service receives enough direct sunlight. So our rock wool cubes can develop algae really quickly. And if they're early plants, that algae will starve the plant of all its essential nutrients and it'll probably die. Great way to prevent algae is just to cover up that rock wool. You can use clay pebbles or cloning cuffs, or uh, more recently I've started using these like pool noodles and cutting them into little custom circles that I can put around the plant to cover up um, the rock wool and the net cup. If you have any leaks, then wherever those leaks are, you'll also develop algae over time, and then that will put algae into your garden. So we really want to avoid any leaks. Just make sure that we put our tower garden together properly and we're avoiding uh, algae buildup. Now, while we're on leaks, I want to talk to you guys about nutrient salt buildup. So within our nutrients, they're made of small nutrient salts. And if the water evaporates, let's say we have a leak or we have a pool of nutrients somewhere, that water evaporates and it leaves behind concentrated nutrient salts. Those are really potent. Those will burn your plant. They will kill young plants. Older plants can become more resilient, but they'll burn you. So you want to avoid getting any of these nutrient salt buildups on your garden. All right, so our plants are in our garden. We're cruising. We've taken what we've learned so far and applied it, but what about moving forward? How do we maintain our tower garden? Well, these are gonna be some general maintenance practices that I wanna help you guys to really wrap your mind around. The biggest one is gonna to be top-offs. Now, when it's time to adjust the nutrients, here's exactly how we're gonna to top off. I always do it in a separate container. So depending on the size of the top off, since we're talking about a 20 gallon reservoir, usually we're gonna to top off in a five gallon bucket. So I'd fill that five gallon bucket with water 
And don't bother setting the pH at this point, because when we add nutrients, that actually makes the pH go far more acidic. It drops down. So we're going to set our pH after we add our nutrients to our five gallon bucket for our top off. So first thing we want to do is take a reading of our tower garden to see where we're at. And then if we need to bring our EC up, we will add more nutrients to our top off solution. If we need to bring it down, we will have a lower nutrient concentration, a lower EC in our top off solution. Then we're going to take our garden's pH and adjust the garden completely all at the same time appropriately. There really is no use in adjusting the pH to your garden before we add the nutrients uh, because it's going to get totally thrown off as soon as we add the nutrients. The Mastering Your Tower Garden series is really for people who came here to see what they could do. They know that it's possible to grow and have amazing harvests from their tower garden and they want to do that themselves. They already have the tools and the equipment, now they just need the information. This video gives you the information that you need to get started and to grow. If you want to fully optimize your tower garden and have an insane growing experience like these people, then you're going to want to check out the Mastering Your Tower Garden course. So not only is it gonna include 14 detailed videos where I'm explaining everything that you need to know, but I also put together a comprehensive course guide to go right along with the Tower Garden class. So I know you're here because you wanna have the best grow you can out of your Tower Gardens. You're probably tired of starting seeds and starting plants and watching them have just mediocre success or die in your Tower Garden. So don't do that again. Let's take this as far as it can go. And you have two choices right now. You can take the information I've given you in this video and synthesizing sunlight, the free lighting guide, and you can go have a good tower garden grow. Or you can sign up for the full Mastering Your Tower Garden course, and you'll see your tower garden performing like you've never even imagined. So no matter which path you take, I still wanna give you guys Synthesizing Sunlight, my comprehensive ebook on lighting for free. So use this discount code right here. Go over to humblegrowthhydroponics.com to download your copy for free right now. So this has been a big video full of a lot of useful information. I hope that you can apply to your tower gardens. I look forward to hearing about your grows in the comments. And if you want to take things to the next step, then click right here to go over to Mastering Your Tower Gardens, Growing More Than Greens.